Mr Speaker. I call Dennis O'Rourke. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I want to begin by uh, taking a look at the speech given by the Minister of Houselessness, Nick Smith, because nowhere in his speech does he say why another three years of SHAs without government investment uh, in land purchase and development in Auckland in particular could work. And nowhere does he say in his speech how another three years of SHAs while low quality open door immigration is taking place could possibly work because that's what's happening. 70,000 net people per year coming into this country, a, a number which is equivalent to the size of a city like Nelson, coming into this country but no care about the fact that they're going to drive demand for housing, drive up prices and drive up rents. And Mr Speaker, nowhere in the Minister's speech was there any reference to the problems caused by overseas purchasers who in this country are still free to buy land, to speculate and to land back. Nowhere is any, are any of those issues referred to in the Minister's speech. He just doesn't care. And the truth is that National actually has no strategy whatsoever which deals with those, issue, those issues or any other, uh, any other. And their pretense that they have a comprehensive housing strategy is utterly ludicrous. Nobody in this country believes that, and the more they say it, the more they will show how dishonest they are being about all of that. And that's the truth of that. And Mr, Mr. Speaker, um, the truth is that the National Party, under the likes of Holyoke, for example, used to be, used to be the party for a property-owning democracy. Those were his words in New Zealand, but no more. No more. This is not that National Party. This is some neoliberal monster which no longer is fit to govern this country. And Mr Speaker, I also want to talk about the National Party, rather the, the Maori Party. Why is it not speaking in this debate? Why is it not attacking National? And why is it not actually fighting this fight? I can't understand that, because this legislation which is being fast-tracked today through its all, all of its stages are aimed at a flogging off state houses and failing to provide a strategy for the building of new homes in New Zealand, whether for purchase or for rent. And it's doing so without consultation or proper scrutiny through the select committee process. So I want to hear from the Maori Party on all of these things, because, Mr Speaker, I think the Maori Party is speaking, if it's speaking at all, with a forked tongue. Because on the one hand, it promotes treaty rights and says that it will, it will protect treaty rights for Maori in this country, but it is failing here and now to fight against a bill which actually removes those treaty rights because it removes the offerback provisions uh, which would otherwise be claimable uh, under current legislation, irrespective of the, the, the Minister's claims that that's not the case. That is actually the truth about the matter. So I want to hear more from the Maori Party, and I want to hear them show up like the rest of it and fight against this bill. And it's not doing so, and I deplore that. Now, Mr Speaker, um, the Minister has also claimed that he is just clarifying the law when it comes to those offer-back prov provisions, and he says there is no actual law change. Well, Mr Speaker, if it is necessary to pass this bill to amend the law, then hello, it must be a law change. Therefore, the Minister can only be wrong that the Minister is not attempting to change the law to make sure that those offer-back provisions can never apply, and that is what New Zealand First objects to. It's what the Maori Party should be objecting to, and it's what other parties object to. Mr Speaker, the bill is a panic measure by a minister, not on top of his portfolio. And when did this minister suddenly realise that time is running out for special housing areas? Why, why, did, why is, you know, within 10 days of the of the termination date, 
is he bringing, suddenly bringing this bill to the House if there is a comprehensive housing strategy? Surely it would be a better strategy than that if there was one, but we all know that there isn't. And what there is instead, Mr Speaker, is plenty of evidence of a failed strategy, in fact no strategy at all, and plenty of evidence of an absence by this government of any new ideas at all. All it can come up with is an expansion of a current failed policy which over three years has actually delivered only 1,300 houses, less than a drop in the bucket as far as Auckland is concerned. So there it is, a panic measure to do little or nothing and to crush people's rights in terms of the um, offer back provisions along the way. Mr Speaker, just to summarise New Zealand First's position, first of all, we believe that there is no justification for the law change, and that's what it is, to remove the offer back provisions. There is no need for that whatsoever. All it does is to feed on this government's panic and need to be seen to be doing something. That's not in the interests of New Zealand. It is certainly not in the interests of people who actually might claim those rights and might claim them for very good reasons. That is what a democracy is about. It's about protecting people's rights, and that is not what this government is doing. It is doing the exact opposite, and it is not good enough. And secondly, Mr Speaker, the need is not only to increase the time for the SHAs to work, if they ever do, but the need is to actually, for the government to actually invest in the purchase of land and in the development of land and not just leave it to private developers to do so. And the reasons why that is so important and why that is a core part of New Zealand first housing policy is that the private market will never meet the needs of New Zealanders in this day and age as far as housing is concerned. The government must take part with direct in investment and, and direct development of housing in New Zealand, especially in Auckland, so that we get enough housing on time, in the right place, and developed in a way that people can afford, with modest sized houses, saleable at modest prices, and with government assistance to purchase. New Zealand First policy is to sell on second mortgage, uh, sections over 25 years, allowing a purchaser to get uh, a first mortgage to build their own home. That's just a common sense policy. But don't ask this government to listen to common sense. All it wants to do is to continue with its failed, failed policies, which are never going to work, oh, Mr. Mr Speaker. So we in New Zealand First oppose both parts of this bill. Unlike the Labour Party, which I, I hear now is quite happy to support the first part, but not the second. And I'm disappointed in that, because I would have hoped that the Labour Party would have seen that actually you need to do more than just have failed SHAs. You need to have government investment. And they, and they have said that, and yet why say to this House that they would support the first part of the bill? That it's better than nothing. It is nothing. It's not better than nothing, Mr Twyford. It actually is nothing. So the Labour Party is supporting nothing. That's wonderful. Well, I think you should take it. You should take the Labour Party should take another look at all this, Mr Speaker. The Labour Party should take another look at why it would support the first part. We don't. We won't have it. Mr Speaker, we insist on much better than that. We insist on a policy which doesn't just provide an extension of a time frame for a failed policy. We want to see government investment. We want to see real commitment to housing by this government in this country. And that's why we won't support it, because we want much better. And we also want people's rights protected as well. So we will not vote for this bill 
because it doesn't do either thing that it proposes to do in a way which we could possibly support, and neither should New Zealanders accept it either. I call Dr Palmji Palmer.